How do you decide if you should work in physical therapy? Not necessarily if you should be a PTA or if you should be a PT, but should you even choose to work in this field at all? That is the question I have for you. Basically, since I first started making YouTube videos, people have been asking me, should I be a PTA? Should I choose this career? And so that's kind of what I wanted to address in this video, but it's a little bit different from some of my other ones of should you be a PTA, where I kind of talk about my own personal experience, and I've also made videos like with the reimbursement changes, is it still a good idea to be a PTA? So I kind of touched on different areas of it, but I want to kind of take a different spin on it and go a little more in depth, specifically on the question of how do you decide Decide if you should be a PTA. First of all, I think there are two different ways that you can look at this question. One is a traditional, traditional way to look at it, and the other is a mod. Okay, I literally sat down and recorded this whole video writing out each of my points and everything, but I realized I am very bad at writing and talking at the same time, and I stutter a lot, and I repeat myself, and so I'm re-recording this whole video, and I'm just going to talk about the different points that I've already written down because I struggle multitasking. So, let's start. The first way to view this question is the traditional viewpoint, and this is the way my dad taught it to me. He's very traditional, and this is the way I've learned it. And when you're talking about traditional, it's very logical, and it's very realistic. Is this career feasible to do? Does it make sense on paper? And does it make sense financially? So the first category when you're talking about logically thinking about should you be a PTA is money. How much will you be earning as a PTA? What is your salary? What is your benefits? What is your retirement? How much are you going to earn as a salary being a PTA? The next thing to think about is where do you want to live? That's what my dad would always tell me. Where do you want to live? And what he means by that is do you want to be rich or poor? Are you looking for a big house or a small house? Do you want two cars? Do you want one car? How many kids do you want? Kids cost money. Do you want three kids or do you want six kids or do you want one kid? Because that will make a difference of how much it costs. Do you want to live in the city? Do you want to live in a rural area? All those things, you should add up the total cost of how you want to live, what your lifestyle will be like, and then you have to determine if being a PTA and the money you're going to make as being a PTA, your salary, will that be able to suffice the lifestyle that you want to live? So is it feasible? Is it realistic to do that? Another thing you want to consider when you're talking about a traditional way to view this question of should you be a PTA is what does the process look like? So what I mean by this is how long is your schooling going to take? How many years is it? It's a two-year program. Um, how much does it cost? Uh, and this includes books, supplies, your uniforms, your scrubs, everything that it's going to cost to become a PTA, and your loans, your interest rates, things like that, and you want to compare that to the money as well. Is it worth it? Are you going to be earning a good enough salary that it's going to make up for the cost, the initial investment up front, and the commitment of becoming a PTA, the commitment of time, energy, your family strain, things like that. This is what you have to consider as well. Another thing you want to look at when you're thinking about it logically is what is the job market look like for becoming a PTA? Will it be around in the future? Will it not be around in the future? Are PTAs going to get paid less in the future? Is it a pretty good outlook? This is what you want to consider when choosing if you should be a PTA. And then the last point I have is growability. Now, I made that word up. I don't think it exists. And basically what I'm talking about when I'm talking about growability is do you have room to advance in this career? So for other careers, like if you get yourself in a big business or a big corporation, you could work your way up the ladder and earn more money and kind of gain more responsibility as you work your way up in the company. Being a PTA, you don't really have the growability there. You can either be a PTA and go back to school and get more debt, to, or you can go back to school to be a PT, or you can choose to not. You can get a degree in business or do something completely different, but there's not a lot of growability in this field. You don't have a ton of room for advancements, so that's something to consider as well when you're thinking about this question logically. And I wrote down here, that you can go to the BLS website if you want to look up uh, how much does a PTA make 
in your area and how much does school cost. You can look up all these things online. The BLS website is the Bureau of Labor Statistics and you can find a lot of good information on there to help you with that decision. So this is one whole way to view this question. It's the traditional way. It's kind of how I was raised, the traditional way. And then you have a different category over here of a different way to view the same question and that is the modern way. I just made up these words, traditional and modern. I just made them up. But the modern way to look at this question of should you be a PTA is what are your desires? What are your dreams? What are your feelings? That's how you kind of view it. The first category is love. Do you love what you do? So the common saying is if you love what you do, you're never gonna work a day in your life. And so that's another way, like are you going to actually enjoy the career as a PTA? Is this something you desire? Is it something you dream to do? Because that's important when choosing a career because you don't wanna get burned out doing something you hate and just feel miserable in it. Uh, according to the Huffington Post, they say that you spend an average of 13 years working at a job for your entire life. So over a lifetime, you spend 13 years of that working. And so you don't wanna hate it because that's a long time to just live miserably clocking in, clocking out at somewhere you don't wanna be. So do you love it? Another category is are you passionate about it? Does, does it make you excited? Are you eager to do it? Do you want to go in, work with people? You find enjoyment out of helping people get better? Are you passionate about what you do? Or do you really not care for it? That's another thing when you're determining if you should be a PTA. Another category when you're talking about should you be a PTA is what are your strengths and weaknesses? Um, so what I mean by this, strengths isn't necessarily something you're good at or something you're just talented at or gifted at, but it's something you can do endlessly for hours without feeling like, like, like bam, where did my day go? Because you enjoy it that much. So for me, something that I could do endlessly for hours is record and edit video. I love editing. I could sit there all day and put together a video and a production because it's something I really enjoy doing. So that is one of my strengths. That's what I enjoy. Um, now a weakness for me would be like writing notes after seeing patients all day. That just burns me out and I feel like I'm so tired, especially if I have a lot of notes to catch up on or doing paperwork that can get me feeling burnt out and I feel like time is just dragging on. So the idea is, is if you become a PTA, does being a PTA allow you to use your strengths or does it kinda accentuate your weaknesses? Because you want it to highlight your strengths. Another thing you wanna think about is does it motivate you? Does it motivate you? Does it excite you to get up in the morning, to go to work? Are you excited to do it? Um, because you want to have motivation in your job. You want to be excited to work with patients because if you don't, you're gonna get stale, you're gonna get stagnant, and it's just not gonna be enjoyable if you really aren't excited about what you're doing. And the last thing to summarize all this is, does being a PTA allow you to do all these things? Does it allow you to love your job? Does it allow you to be passionate for it? Does it allow you to use your strengths or does it motivate you? Being a PTA, the way you determine if it's the right career for you is if you can choose, if you can do all these things by being a PTA, then that means it's a good career. If you can't do all these things, if you don't love it, if you're not passionate about it, then maybe it's not the best career choice. Same thing over here. If it's not sustainable realistically money-wise, if it's not feasible by the lifestyle you want to live, then it might not be a good career for you. But if the lifestyle you choose, if you can afford it with being a PTA, then yes, it might be a good, a good career for you to get into. I don't think I've ever recorded something in one sitting like that, and that was exhausting. And I don't know if you were able to follow all that. Hopefully you did. Okay, now let me flip this over. Here we go. I think, let me just draw this graph here. So on this graph that I'm making, you have your traditional line that goes that way. And then you have your modern line, your modern way of thinking about this question of should you be a PTA? Now I feel like if you're more traditional, if you're leaning more towards the traditional side, that'll put you way over here. And say this person would be like, if you are later on in life, you're not 
really worried about if you love what you do or anything like that. You're just trying to pay your bills to support your family. You're you're just looking to do it as kind of just an enjoyment. So this might be like a 53 year old person just looking to settle down, settle down. You're just looking to relax and you're looking to getting something that makes sense, that is a smart decision to do. That would be where you would fall over here. Now, if you're like me, this is kind of where I fall when it comes to YouTube, for example. So YouTube, for me, let's just say YouTube. For me, YouTube, I am really passionate about it. I really enjoy it. It's super fun for me. I can spend time doing it endlessly. I'm motivated to do it. It's a very modern thing for me to do YouTube. But traditionally, it doesn't make that sense on paper. It's not really financially viable for me. The career might not be around forever. People might jump on TikTok or Facebook or something else, Instagram TV. So YouTube could definitely fail and all these videos could be for nothing, but I don't care. I really enjoy it. I love doing it. It's not a very traditional mindset. Now, I feel like the dream job, the best job that you could get would be way out here. So out here, you have the perfect combination of traditionally, it makes sense, you can earn good money, it's logically, you can support your family, and also, it's way over here on the modern end of you really uh, enjoy it, you love what you do, you're passionate about it, and this, whoa, I'm losing my paper. This would be considered the sweet spot. That's where you want to end up. If being a PTA allows you to meet your needs, it allows you to sustain financially, and it allows you to do what you love, then this is the perfect career for you, being a PTA. If it's way down here and it doesn't make sense on paper for you, and it doesn't, and you're not passionate about it, then bad idea. Let's say bad idea. Here's a bad idea. This is the sweet spot. This is where you want to be and this is how you decide if being a PTA is right for you, if it meets your needs all around. When I started my career as a PTA, this is more so where I was. I was on the traditional side. The reason I became a PTA was way different than any of my classmates. The first day of my PTA program, the teacher asked us, all, everybody in the room, we had to go around one by one telling them why we wanted to be a PTA. And all my classmates were saying like, when I was six, I got hurt, and ever since then, I knew that this was the career for me, and ever since I seen my mom go through rehab, I knew that this is what I wanted to do. They, all, they had all these great, elaborate stories, but me, I picked the career of being a PTA based off my parents because it seemed logical. The cost of going in wasn't a lot, the length of school, the timing wasn't a lot. Uh, it made a decent income for the life that I was living currently. It seemed realistic for me to do it, and that is why I got, in, got into physical therapy. Now, that's where I've been working at, and I do love what I do. I've learned that I, the things about my job that really puts me this way would be working with patients. Working with people is what I love about the job. I love seeing people get better. That's what motivates me. That's what excites me is seeing the response, seeing the change of people. And I didn't know that at first. The reason I picked it was very traditionally, but as I got working in it, I realized that I really did start to like it. And then on top of that, I started doing YouTube stuff. So taking what I've learned through physical therapy, becoming one, I intertwined my hobbies. So you don't necessarily need to work in the career that is just all it, roses and you love it absolutely, anything like that, but you can still do your hobbies on the side like I am through YouTube and then I can combine the two. And that's where I find my sweet spot is when I'm allowed to do YouTube, do video, I can be creative and I also can work with people and, it, and I'm in a stable career. I feel like that's where I start to go if I can incorporate both. If I don't do this, then I can get burned out and I don't love it anymore. And if I didn't have this, then I would be broke and living on the streets because YouTube doesn't pay very well. So, so that's kind of how you could determine what is right for you. I really hope that this gives you maybe a different way to view this question of should you be a PTA? I think the perfect mixture is traditionally and a modern viewpoint because I think 
There is a lot of wisdom and value in the traditional mindset of earning an income to support your family, but I also like the idea of loving what you do because it is actually really enjoyable for me to do YouTube stuff. And if I can turn that into a career, if I can earn more money off that, then it's even more enjoyable for me. So I think that that's a great kind of spot to be in. So let me know if you thought this video was helpful. I'm sorry if it was hard to follow. I struggle writing and talking at the same time and it definitely shows. So sorry if this video is all over the place, but I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch it and I will see you on another video. Peace.